Now there were three of them, and they're coming right for us! Oh, no! Hurry, Junior Rangers. Take the baby and go. I'll distract them. Got it, Ranger Rocky. Be careful, Leo. There, all done. Huh? Why did it fly away? Is there something wrong with our birdhouse? I thought birds like birdhouses. Oh, hi, Junior Ranger Farah. What's up? Hi, Leo. I'm at the Komodo National Park, and I found the most amazing thing ever. What did you find, Farah? An egg. Huh? An egg? Here's a photo of it. Do you know which bird laid the egg? Hmm. It looks like a chicken egg. But I compared it with photos in my handbook, and the egg I found is different. It's bigger than a chicken egg. How exciting! I'm sure we can find out more on the computer. Let's see what type of bird laid the egg. That's not a bird at all. It's the egg of a Komodo dragon. A dragon? Farah found a dragon egg? It's not really a dragon, Leo. Komodo dragons are the largest lizards in the world. They can be found on the many islands in Komodo National Park in Indonesia. Komodo dragons lay about 30 eggs in their nests. But I only found one egg. And it was on the ground with no nest in sight. Oh, no. Was the egg separated from its nest? <gasps> We have to return it. Don't worry, Farah. We'll be right over to help. Okay, see you guys soon. Ranger out. Ranger out. All right, let's return the Komodo dragon's egg to its nest. It'll be exciting to visit an island full of dragons. Hi, Farah. Hi, Farah. <laughs> Hi, guys. Huh? Uh-oh, something's happening. <gasps> it hatched. Aw, it's so cute. Hello, baby Komodo dragon. I'm sure its mother will be looking for it. We have to find its nest quick. <laughs> huh? What's wrong, hero? Whoa, a dragon. A Komodo dragon. Is that its mother? Let's take the baby over to her. Stop. I would not do that if I were you. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Hello, Junior Rangers. My, my, that is one cute baby lizard. Why did you stop me from returning the baby Komodo dragon, Ranger Rocky? We do not know for sure if that adult Komodo dragon is its mom. Besides, Komodo dragons do not take care of their young. In fact, Adult Komodo dragons are often a danger to young Komodo dragons. Adult Komodo dragons are also venomous. You should be careful not to get bitten. If you do, you should see a doctor and get medical attention right away. It looks like it's up to us to find a home for the baby Komodo dragon. Let's take it away before the adult sees us. Too late! Now there were three of them! And they're coming right for us! Oh, no! Hurry, Junior Rangers. Take the baby and go. I'll distract them. Got it, Ranger Rocky. Easy. Easy. This must be Pink Beach. It says here that the pink color comes from small bits of broken pink and red coral. When mixed with the white sand, the beach looks pink. It's really beautiful here. But is it the right place for the baby Komodo dragon? It seems safe and warm enough, but I don't think there's anything for it to eat. We'll have to find a better spot then. At least Hero's having fun with our new friend. <laughs> Where's the baby Komodo dragon? I'll find it. Where is it? Aha! Found it! It's over there! 
Komodo dragons are strong swimmers. They can even swim between the different islands in the park. I guess there's nothing to worry about. The baby Komodo dragon can swim back to us. But I don't think the baby is very good at swimming yet. Huh? What's that? Oh no, not another one. Hero, you save the baby. I'll distract the big one. Jetpack, activate. Wait, it's too dangerous. Be careful, you two. Hey, big guy, look over here. We got them, Leo. Go fetch. Phew, that was close. That was a very dangerous thing to do, Leo. According to our Junior Rangers pledge, I will wait for assistance from a fellow ranger when there's danger. Well, my fellow ranger, Hero was assisting me. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> I'm just glad everyone is all right. Now we just need to find a safe place for our little friend here. I found this place while scouting the island. There are plenty of trees around and it's really peaceful here. Best of all, there are insects in the trees. What do you think, Hero? Will this be a good place for our new friend? <laughs> the baby Komodo dragon seems to like the tree. I think our new friend will be very happy here. We did it! We brought the baby Komodo dragon to safety. We are here. Wow! Where does this river lead to, Jane? Hmm, I am not sure. Huh? Guys, look! A pink lizard! But lizards aren't pink. Do you think it's sick? What if it has a fever? Let's not jump to conclusions, Leo. <laughs> You're right. Smile. I sent you its photo, Katie. Can you find out more about it? I'm already on it. Oh, it's not your average lizard. It's a panther chameleon. Panther chameleons can change the color of their skin. They can blend in with their surroundings to camouflage themselves. The chameleons mostly change colors to reflect their mood, communicate with other chameleons, and to warm up or cool down. Oh, so it isn't sick after all. It just changed its color to pink. Yep, panther chameleons prefer to live on their own and can get aggressive towards other chameleons invading their home. Males will become more vibrant in color when competing with other males. Hey, it's another chameleon. Uh-oh. <gasps> they both want the same tree. But there are plenty of trees around. What if we host a friendly competition for them? Whoever wins gets the tree fair and square. No fighting. Round one, the chameleon that changes the most colors in one minute wins. May the best chameleon win. Two, one. Time's up. And the winner of round one is the pink, no, red chameleon. Yay! <sighs> it's all right. We'll win the next round. But what's next? Let's see. According to my research, chameleons have eyes that can move in two directions at the same time. Hmm, fascinating. They also have very sticky tongues. Their tongues can be twice as long as their bodies when stretched out to catch insects. Cool! That gives me a tongue-tastic idea. The first chameleon who catches the spider with its long sticky tongue wins. Three, two, one, go! Come and get it! Over there! Whoa. It's right there! Almost! So close! Yes! Now! Oops! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! They're fighting again! Uh-oh! Everyone, to Platypus 1! 
Junior Rangers to the rescue. Platypus One, activate. Oh no! Let's split off. Katie and Hero, you guys go after the red chameleon. Jane, Zumi, and I will follow the blue one. Got it. Jetpack, activate. We got this. We're coming for you! Just a little closer. Hello, Junior Rangers. Ranger, Ranger Rocky? Rocky? And what are you guys up to? We're trying to rescue a panther chameleon that fell into the water. Oh dear, they're not known to be strong swimmers. Yes, panther chameleons are great grabbers. They have large toes on their hands and feet as well as a prehensile tail that helps them cling on to branches. I trust you rangers to rescue the chameleon. See you around. Bye, Bye Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Onwards. The red chameleon has to be here somewhere. Do you see it, Hero? Wait for me, Hero. Strange. We followed the river all the way downstream, but where's the blue chameleon? Leo. Do you think it might have drowned? Don't worry, I'm sure it's all right. We'll find it. I know we will. Oh, good job, Hero. There you are. You're safe now. There's some driftwood up ahead. Let's see if it's there. Hey, guys. Look who we found. Welcome back. Did you find the blue chameleon? Nope but it has to be here somewhere. Let's just continue to look. Got it, Leo. I found it. Oh, false alarm. It's all right. Keep at it, Rangers. Huh? What's wrong? Are you trying to tell me something? <gasps> it's over here. The red chameleon found its buddy. Oh yeah, I see it. You know, Chameleons turn a darker shade when they're stressed out. Ah! There you go. Home sweet home. They are friends now. No more fighting. What are you doing, Peo? I'm looking for the tortoises. <laughs> you won't find any under there. The Lapagos tortoises are huge. Really? How big can a tortoise be? Oh! That big! Whoa! Mm. It's huge! It looks like you found one, Peyo. Let's find out for sure. I've just sent you its photo, Katie. Can you check it out? I'm already on it. Let's see. It's indeed a Galapagos tortoise. They are the world's largest tortoises and can weigh more than a the fridge. Their shells are not solid and are made up of honeycomb structures that hold small air chambers. This makes the shell lighter and easier for the tortoise to carry. The shell also protects it from predators. Galapagos tortoises can live to about 100 years. Whoa, a hundred years? <sighs> what was that? <laughs> Hero! Pika! <laughs> Uh-oh, they don't sound happy. They don't look happy either. I think they're fighting. Do you think they're fighting over those fruits? Hmm, a green apple? Stop! What is it? What's wrong? Don't touch that! Step away from the fruit! That's the fruit of the manchineel tree! The most dangerous tree in the world! All parts of it are poisonous! Phew, that was close. Thanks, Peo. <gasps> are they harmful to tortoises? Nope, Galapagos tortoises actually eat those poisonous apples. Eeks! What can we do to stop them from fighting? I've got an idea! Ready, Hero? 
Let's lure them away from each other. <laughs> careful not to touch the fruit, guys. Please be extra careful. Don't worry, we'll be careful. <laughs> All right, hero, let's do this. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Over here, tortoise! It's working! <laughs> Slow and steady. Well done, buddy. Here you go. Huh? Hero, stop teasing it. Just give it the fruit. Mm. <laughs> ah, the tortoise! Mm. Oh no! Hero! <laughs> mm. Hang in there, buddy. Over here, guys. We have to flip it back on its feet. On the count of three, let's flip it together. Ready? Ready! Ready. <laughs> One, two, three. Flip it over! <laughs> Almost! Almost. <sighs> <sighs> it's so heavy. Oh, hi, Ranger Rocky. How's it going over there, Leo? Found any Galapagos tortoises yet? Yes, we have. But one of them flipped over on its shell. Oh, dear. That sounds like a tricky situation. Galapagos tortoises have two main shell shapes, domed and saddleback. Some are shaped in between the two extremes. Domed tortoises have rounder shells and shorter necks. Saddleback tortoises have flatter shells with a raised neck opening resembling a saddle, as well as longer necks and limbs. Do you need my help, Junior Rangers? Nope. We got this, Ranger Rocky. We'll figure it out on our own. All right. I better get back to counting tortoises then. Keep me posted and good luck. Ranger out. Ranger out. <laughs> Hang in there, buddy. We'll flip you over in no time. Ta-da! Oh, wow! Cool! All right, everyone grab the rope. Ready? Ready! Ready. <laughs> this is going to work for sure. Three, two, one, pull! <laughs> Almost there! <laughs> Jetpack activate! Leave it to me! Got it! Yay! Yay! Awesome! We did it! Just in time! Ranger Rocky, we did it! We flipped the tortoise back on its feet! And we did it all by ourselves! Amazing work, Junior Rangers! Well done. No more fighting. It's time to settle this once and for all. May the best tortoise win. Ready, set, go. Come on, tortoises. Juicy, non-poisonous apples await you. Go, 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 go. go, go. <laughs> Mission accomplished. You can do this, Pedro. Just a little more. Whoa! Phew. Got it. Now to get down from here. Hmm. You know, Pico, some of these vines look and feel kind of funny. See? This one almost looks like a snake. And a big one, too. I've got to get down. Ranger Leo speaking. Huh? Pico, is that you? Where's Peo? What's going on, Leo? I'm not sure, Katie. It's Pico. Pico? Wait, do you hear that? It sounds like somebody's talking. Huh? Something's not right. Send me the video, Leo. I'll see if I can isolate the voice and amplify its volume. Sure thing, Katie. And... Done! Pico, 
tell them that I'm stuck in a tree. And there's a big green snake right in front of me. I can't get down. Uh-oh. If we zoom in and unblur it... <gasps> Peo! Green snake. Hmm, they're not that big. Can we look at the video again? Some of the vines look a little funny. Just have to do a quick scan. <gasps> a green anaconda? Oh, no! Peo is stuck in a tree with an anaconda. We've got to get him down quick. We can find out more information about the animal on the way there. Let's see. The green anaconda is the world's largest snake. Anacondas are constrictors. They coil themselves around their prey and squeeze them. With their stretchy jaws, anacondas open their mouths wide to swallow their prey whole. Once they've eaten a big meal, they can go for weeks or months without food. Oh boy, we'd better hurry. Look, it's Peo's bag. Pico! Where's Peo? Is he okay? Over here! I'm over here! Whoa, it's huge. Yeep. Don't worry, Peo. We'll get you down. Jetpack, Jetpack activate. activate. Here you go, Peo. Thanks, Leo. Now grab hold of us. Oh, no! Oh, oh. Never mind me. Just take this somewhere safe. We mustn't let anything happen to the flower. <gasps> oh, no! Don't worry, Peo. I'll get it. And I'll find a way to get you down. We leave no rangers behind. Huh? Oh! Well, that was easy. Where's it going? Oh, no! Guys! No! Not the bug! Now we'll never get the flower back! Hang on, Peo. Let's get you down first. Huh? Pico! No! You'll get hurt! <laughs> no, Hero! Hero! The anaconda's way too strong for them. Katie, help me grab its tail. Stop right there. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Back away from the tail. What you're about to do is very dangerous. Tangling with an anaconda is a dangerous thing to do. Anacondas are big and strong, but they usually only attack humans when they feel threatened. If you mess around with its tail, it might see that as a threat. Green anacondas may move slowly on land, but they're great in water. They're fast swimmers, and because their eyes and nostrils are on the top of their heads, they can breathe and see even when most of their body is underwater. What do we do then, Ranger Rocky? We have to get my bag. No worries, Peo. I'll take it from here. Leave this to the experts, children. <laughs> What's he going to do? I have no idea, but I'm sure Ranger Rocky has an awesome plan. Now, now. I don't want any trouble, but I'm going to need that bag. Oh, no, you don't. Calm down now. <gasps> It's constricting him. Are you sure you don't need us to do anything, Ranger Rocky? <clears throat> nope. I have it all under control. Aha! Catch! My bag! Phew, it's all right. It's getting kind of squeezy. Time to get out of here. Be back in a second, Junior Rangers. Oh! Ranger Rocky! Oh, no! Ranger Rocky! Ah! Ah! Ranger Rocky, you're okay! I sure am! That was amazing! But weren't you scared of the anaconda, Ranger Rocky? It's huge! There was no need to be scared. Anacondas are not out to hurt people. The anaconda was just defending itself. Ranger Rocky is right. We're the ones who entered its home. Well, I've learned my lesson. Never approach or provoke an anaconda when you see one. Always check a tree before you climb it. You never know what's living in there. <laughs> <laughs> Keep at it, guys. We're almost done. <gasps> guys, come check this out. Ooh, 
What is it? Let's find out. I've just sent his photo to you, Katie. Got it. Now let's see. Oh, it's a Brazilian yellow scorpion. Like spiders, scorpions are part of the arachnid group. Arachnids tend to have two body segments, eight legs, and no wings or antennae. The Brazilian yellow scorpion has pale yellow legs. Watch out for their stings. They can cause serious harm. Scorpions have a venomous stinger at the end of their tails. They use them to protect themselves and catch food. Scorpions are carnivorous and eat insects such as cockroaches. Hmm. It's not safe to leave the scorpion here. We need to move it to a deserted area, somewhere far away from everyone. Good idea, Leo. Let me help. Hey, oh no! The scorpion is venomous, remember? It's too dangerous to pick it up with your bare hands. Done. Nice trap, Leo. Thanks, Peo. Now all we need is bait. Hmm, what can we use? <laughs> I've got just the thing. A tasty snack for the scorpion. Is that a real cockroach? Nah, it's just a toy. I also have a rubber gecko and a rubber snake in my bag. Do you guys want to see? Maybe later, Peo. We'd better get the scorpion down first. Okie dokie. Here. Perfect. I hope this works. Come and get your snack, little scorpion. Come on. That's it. Just a bit more. Gotcha. Yay! <laughs> now we just have to find a jar to put it in. Katie, Hero, and I will go look for one. Peo, can you and Pico stay here to keep an eye on the scorpion? Make sure it doesn't escape. You can count on us, Leo. Awesome. We'll be back soon. Take your time. Hot, two, three, four. Hot, two, three, four. Hot, two, three. Hmm. It's awfully quiet. Hello? Are you still in there? Do you need some air? Hello, Junior Ranger. Ranger Rocky! What are you doing here? I'm looking for a scorpion. I saw one at the campsite earlier and I tried to catch it, but the sneaky fella got away. I've been trying to find it all day long. Oh, you mean this one? Huh? Wait a second, where is the yellow scorpion? We trapped it. But I don't see anything, Peo. That's strange. Where did it go? Ah! Ah! Oh no, Ranger Rocky! So, there you are, little fella. I finally got you. Are you okay? It stung you. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I shouldn't have lifted the basket. You're hurt and it's all my fault. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What's going on? Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky? Hello, Junior Rangers. Ah, perfect. Can I have that jar, Leo? Sure, Ranger Rocky. But what's going on? <gasps> the scorpion. Yeah, it's It's all right, Peo. It's all good. But Ranger Rocky, that's a... Brazilian yellow scorpion, I know. Most scorpion stings are painful, but not fatal. However, the Brazilian yellow scorpion is regarded as the most dangerous scorpion in South America, as their venom is extremely toxic. It's especially dangerous to young children. We have to relocate the scorpion. I'll take over from here. No, Ranger Rocky. Leave it to us. I promise you, we'll be very careful. You need to go to the hospital. Well, all right then. Ranger Rocky to headquarters. Requesting helicopter evacuation. Pronto. Just have to mix them. Just a little more. hey -o, what are you doing? I'm making a paste with some medicinal herbs from my bag. It'll help with Ranger Rocky's sting. Done! Here, Ranger Rocky. This will ease the pain. Thanks, Peo. And don't worry, I'll be fine. Ah, just in time. 
Please be very careful, Junior Rangers. See you around. Bye, Bye Ranger Rocky. Take care. I'm really sorry. Don't feel too bad, Peo. He's Ranger Rocky. He'll be fine. Now, we need to get this scorpion away from here. Let's do this, Rangers. <laughs> can you hold this for me, Peo? Of course, Leo. You can count on me. This time for sure. All right, let's go. This place seems deserted. There are no tents around. It should be safe to release the scorpion here, but we have to be very careful. Just leave it to me. Can I have the jar, Peo? Here you go. Jetpack, activate. Please be careful, Leo. Don't get too close to the scorpion. Got it. Be free, little one. Yay! Yay! <laughs> we did it. What is it, Hero? Oh, it's just a piece of rope. Did you think it was a snake? <laughs> oh, hi, Junior Ranger Zari. Leo, there's a snake in my bathroom. Check it out. Whoa, it's huge. Keep a safe distance away from it, Zari. How did it get there? I'm safe, Leo, but I don't know how the snake got here. A bathroom's no place for a snake to live in. We need to get it home. Did someone say snake? Yeah, there's one in Zari's bathroom, Katie. Don't worry, Zari. We'll find out more about the snake and come right over to help you. Great. Ranger out. Ranger out. Let's see. The snake in Zari's bathroom is a reticulated python. They are one of the world's longest snakes, and they're native to South Asia and Southeast Asia. Reticulated pythons are constrictors, which means they coil around prey and squeeze them tightly. Oh no, we better hurry over to Zari right now. Let's head up to Zari's place. Zari, are you okay? Huh, what are you doing, Zari? I'm playing the recorder to hypnotize the python with music so it'll be calm. That way, it won't hurt us when we try to move it home. Are you sure that'll work? Of course. I saw it on a TV show. Don't believe everything you see on TV, Junior Rangers. Ranger, Ranger Rocky? Rocky? Playing music won't hypnotize pythons. They don't hear sounds the same way as humans. Oh, then what should we do? Sorry, Junior Rangers. I have an emergency to attend to. Can you keep an eye on the python? I'll be back soon. But remember to keep a safe distance from it. You can count on us. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Goodbye, Goodbye Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Okay, python. <gasps> Where did it go? The python is headed out the window. Oh, no. Jetpack activate. Where did it go? Come back, python. Where are you, Python? Come on out. Did the Python come this way? What? Leo, you lost it? <laughs> Hello, Junior Rangers. Where's the reticulated Python? Um, I lost it. Yeah, the Python's probably far away by now. Don't give up, Junior Rangers. The Python could still be in the area, so be careful as you search the area. Don't get too close to the python. Yes, Ranger Rocky. We're on it. Let's do this. Jetpack, Jetpack activate. activate. <laughs> Time to roll. Where are you, python? Come on out. Where are you, python? Come on out. <laughs> Any pythons here? Python, are you there? Did anyone find the python? Nope. Hero? <gasps> Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Stand back, children. Everything is fine. Now it's time to bring this python home.
Here you go. Goodbye, Python. Stay safe. Don't wander into any more bathrooms. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Hero, I'm trying to get better at swimming, but it's not fun practicing alone. Why don't we swim together? You go first, Hero. Wow, you're a natural hero. Maybe I should try it your way. Ah! It's a crocodile! There's a small crocodile in the pool. Boy, that was scary. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. So if it's not a crocodile, what is it? Hi, Leo. The animal you found is a water monitor. There are different types of water monitors, and the one in our pool is a Malayan water monitor. I see. Still, it sure looks like a crocodile. It's easy to mistake water monitors for crocodiles, especially when they're in the water. But if you look closely, they're quite different. Water monitors have a shorter snout and a longer, thinner tail as compared to crocodiles. But like crocodiles, water monitors are often found near water and are excellent swimmers. This is because the long, powerful tails of water monitors are used to propel them through the water. Wow! Maybe I should learn how to improve my swimming from a water monitor. <laughs> Don't get too close, though. Water monitors will defend themselves if they feel threatened. I see. So, what kind of food do water monitors eat? They eat small animals, fish, and birds. But if they want to, they can eat anything they can swallow. Yikes! I don't think the water monitor belongs here. What if it eats all the animals in our garden? Well, normally, Malayan water monitors don't live in gardens. They live in forests in different countries in South and Southeast Asia. The one you found comes from this place. Hmm. I think we should return the water monitor to its natural home in the forest. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. I'm sure the water monitor would be happy to go back home. See you downstairs. There are too many rocks on this bank for the water monitor to dig its home. Look, Leo. What about the bank on the other side? Hmm, that looks like a good place, Katie. There aren't as many rocks over there. Come on, everyone. Let's go over there. Here we go. What's happening, Hero? Let me take a look. A large fishing hook pierced the float. We need to get the hook out and fix the float. Leave the fishing hook to me, Leo. Good luck, Katie. There. But we're losing a lot of air. If we don't fix the float, the Jeep will sink. We have to cover the hole. What can we use? The water monitor covered the hole by sitting on it. Thanks, water monitor. Great. Let's head to the riverbank. We made it. Good work, water monitor. 
Goodbye, little friend. We did it. We found the water monitor's home. Great job, everyone. Yay! Hooray! Today, we found a Malayan water monitor in our garden. We learned that water monitors live in forests where they build their homes near water. So we went to a riverbank in the forest and found its home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Those are juggling balls, Hero. Check me out. Can you pass me another ball, Hero? Thank you. This is getting difficult. Ah! Oh dear. Let's find those balls, Hero. It's a lizard. Whoa, that's a strong tail. I wonder what kind of lizard it is. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Smile, lizard. Hi, Katie. So what did you find about the lizard? Hi, Leo. This lizard is a green iguana, also known as the common iguana. Some green iguanas come in different colors, and they can change their color when they get older. The green iguana you found is still young. An adult iguana can grow up to two meters long. Green iguanas are herbivores. They feed on leafy green plants, flowers, and fruits. Green iguanas can be found in rainforests of Central, South America, and the Caribbean. Green iguanas like to spend most of their time in trees. When they are high up in the tree, they can enjoy the sunlight. Sunlight helps them control their body temperature. Then we should bring our new friend back to the trees in the rainforest. Come and join us. The green iguana would love that, Leo. See you downstairs. This is a good spot for the green iguana. Enjoy, iguana! Let's hope this is the right place for it. <coughs> Look up there, Leo! It's a hawk, one of the green iguana's predators. Why is the green iguana not running away? Green iguanas blend well into their surroundings. They will stay very still until a predator passes them by. It's too late! Let's use our propellers and distract the hawk. Oh no! Great move, green iguana! Its tail came off. Now let's get away from here. Poor iguana. Don't worry, Leo. Sometimes green iguanas drop their tails when they are trying to escape from a predator. This might help them get away. The iguana will even grow a new tail. Really? That's great to hear, Katie. We found the green iguana's home. Great work, everybody. Yay! Yay! A green iguana in our garden. We learned that green iguanas 
just like to stay high up in trees to enjoy the sunlight. We also learned that green iguanas like to live near water. So when there's danger, they can escape by jumping into the water. Good job, children. You did it. everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Look at this, Hero. It's a boat I made out of leaves. Now, time to test it out. Hmm, it looks kind of lonely. I know, I'll make a boat for you too, Hero. There, now we can have a boat race. We'll start blowing our boats on the count of three. Ready, Hero? One, two, three. <laughs> ah! Could it be some kind of snake? We must have disturbed it with our boat race. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. The animal you found is an electric eel. An electric eel? Can it make electricity? It sure can. An electric eel is a kind of fish that uses electricity to stun its prey and defend itself from predators. The electric eel can produce electricity because it has special organs that allow it to store power, just like batteries. That's a really neat skill. What else does the electric eel use its electricity for? The electric eel has poor eyesight so it uses electricity to sense its surroundings and find prey. The electric eel does this by releasing a low-level electric charge, which it uses like a radar. I see. What kind of food do electric eels eat? Electric eels eat sea creatures like fish, crabs, and shrimps. Some also eat small animals like frogs and birds. Electric eels live in South America, where they can be found in the Amazon and Orinoco rivers. Hmm, it's too dangerous for the fish in our pond to live with the electric eel. We should bring the electric eel back to its natural home. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. There. Whoa! Whoa! Ah, it's a river monster. That's not a river monster, Leo. That's an anaconda. Anacondas are the largest snakes in the world. They also have large appetites and prey on anything they can eat. It's wrapping itself around the float. The anaconda must think the jeep is food. No, Hero. The anaconda can swallow you whole. We could get the electric eel to help us. It can zap the anaconda and scare it away. Be careful, Katie. I have these rubber gloves to protect me from the eel's electricity. I have to make sure I don't touch the water with my skin. <laughs> the electric eel is too heavy. Let me help you, Katie. Goes. The electric eel zapped the anaconda. Look, it's letting go of the float. Now, let's put the eel back in the tank and get out of here. We did it. We found the electric eel's home. Great job, everyone. Hooray! Yay! found 
an electric eel in our garden. We learned that electric eels produce electricity to stun prey and scare away predators. We also learned that electric eels live in the Amazon and Orinoco rivers. So we went to the Orinoco River and brought the electric eel back home. Good job, children. You did it. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Look what I got, Hero. It's a marine aquarium, and it has special saltwater plants in it. Look at that pretty seaweed, Hero. It looks like it has eyes. <gasps> it moved. Did you see that, too? What do you think? Is this seaweed or an animal? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. So what is it? You won't believe it, Leo. It's an animal. The name of this animal is the leafy sea dragon. It's a type of fish. Leafy sea dragons are similar to the more famous seahorses. It looks more like seaweed than a seahorse. I wonder if it eats seaweed. No, it doesn't. The leafy sea dragon is a carnivore, which means it feeds on other animals like tiny shellfish and shrimp. It has a mouth that looks like a straw, which it uses to suck up its food. So there's no food for the leafy sea dragon in the aquarium. The aquarium isn't a good home for the leafy sea dragon anyway. It needs to live in the sea where there's plenty of food for it. And the best place for leafy sea dragons is in the waters of Southern Australia. That's the only place in the world where they can be found and also where they can be safe. There are laws in Australia to protect leafy sea dragons. People are not allowed to remove these rare animals from the sea without permission. Then let's take the leafy sea dragon back home so it can stay where it's protected. Come and join us. Yes, let's go. See you downstairs. For lots of fun and lots to learn One, two, off we go For lots of fun and lots to learn Ranger Rocky, you got here fast What's going on? I want to make sure nobody comes too close A storm just hit this area And it washed a heap of seaweed ashore Leafy sea dragons live among seaweed So they often get washed ashore with the seaweed When the waters get rough Oh no! So there might be leafy sea dragons lying in the seaweed? I'm afraid so, Katie. I'm looking through the seaweed to find them. I want to put them back in the water quickly so that they'll survive. We'll help you, Ranger Rocky. That would be great. Come in. Look, I just found a leafy sea dragon in this pile of seaweed. If you find any leafy sea dragons, Put them in here. Yes, yes Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Good job, Junior Rangers. We found all the leafy sea dragons. Since we're taking our leafy sea dragon back to its natural home, we can also bring these, Ranger Rocky. That's wonderful, Leo. Please, take this. Look at how much seagrass there is. This will be a great home for the leafy sea dragons. There they go. Stay safe, leafy sea dragons. We did it. We found the leafy sea dragons a home. Great job, everybody. Hooray! Yay!
found a leafy sea dragon in my marine aquarium. We learned that leafy sea dragons are very rare animals that look like seaweed. They hide in seaweed so that other animals can't spot them. And we took the leafy sea dragon home to Australia because leafy sea dragons are protected there. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. You're just in time for a game of table tennis, Hero. Okay, Hero, I will serve the ball first. Here I go. Oh, almost, Hero. What is it, Hero? More balls? How did they get here? Oh my, what's happening? It's a baby turtle. So these aren't balls, they're eggs. Do you know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Now smile, little one. Hi, Katie. What information did you find about the baby sea turtle? Hi, Leo. There are seven types of sea turtles. This one is a leatherback sea turtle. It's the largest of all sea turtles. The leatherback sea turtle is named for its shell. It doesn't have a hard bony shell like other sea turtles have. Instead, its shell is covered with skin which feels like rubber or like leather. The leatherback sea turtle can also dive deeper than any other sea turtle. Leatherbacks eat small sea creatures, but what they mostly eat is their favorite food, jellyfish. Unfortunately, they sometimes find plastic bags in the sea and mistake them for jellyfish, so they eat the plastic bags. This is one of the reasons why the leatherback sea turtle is in danger. Oh no! People should not throw their garbage in the seas. Absolutely, Leo. Especially because the leatherback can be found in almost every sea worldwide. Male leatherbacks never leave the water, but female leatherbacks will leave the water to lay her eggs at the beach. I see. We should bring the baby sea turtle and the eggs back to their nest at the beach. Great idea, Leo. That's their best chance for survival. of fun and lots to learn. One, two, off we go for lots of fun and lots to learn. Look, Baby Turtle is trying to make it for the sea. Oh no, raccoons. No, you can't have these eggs. It's too dangerous here, little one. Let's run. Can we do, Leo? I sense trouble, Junior Rangers. Ranger Rocky, raccoons are trying to get the baby sea turtle and the sea turtle eggs. Raccoons dislike bright lights, strong smells, and loud noises. Good luck. I have an idea. Let's try to make some noise with those smelly dustbin lids. Hopefully, that will scare the raccoons away. Great idea, Katie. And there is Hero to help. Ugh. It worked! They're finally gone. The eggs and the baby turtle are safe again. Shoo, crabs! Good luck, little friend. Look, the eggs are hatching. Goodbye, everybody. We did it. We found the sea turtle's nest. Great job, everyone.
found a baby sea turtle and eggs in our garden. We learned that they are leatherback sea turtles. They have soft shells and prefer sandy beaches to lay their eggs. So we brought the eggs back to the sea turtle's nest and the baby sea turtles found their way to the sea. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Hit subscribe and click the like icon.